In the last video, we saw how to perform linear discriminant analysis in R and we took the IS data, which is the data for you know classification of plus into different uh, categories. Um, so in this video, we'll see how to perform a quadratic uh, uh, discriminant analysis. Now, uh, one of the fundamental difference between uh, uh, linear discriminant analysis and quadratic discriminant analysis is that in linear discriminant analysis, the um, uh, you know uh, the uh, classes the uh, probability that a particular observation falls into uh, a particular class is a function of is a linear function of the uh, explanatory variables. Whereas uh, in quadratic uh, discriminant analysis, it's not a linear anymore; it's a quadratic function. Now the difference between linear and quadratic functions. Is, is very simple. In linear, you have a straight line function, whereas in, quadrat, uh, in quadratic uh, uh, function, that, that takes a, a curve, right? It's, it's no more a, a linear line or, or, or a straight line. All right. So let's uh, perform. Let's go ahead with the same data. So using the data iris, and we have used the uh, training and test sample in the previous video for you know, linear discriminant analysis, we'll use the same code. We'll use the um, simple random sampling in order to get uh, uh, the training data. We'll use 50% of the data for, uh, you know, training uh, sample and another uh, the, the remaining 50% for the test sample. And how do we do it? We do like this. Okay. So that's the way we, uh, we have, you know, sampled our data into training and test types. Let's run this first. Okay, so how does iris looks like? So for people who have not seen the previous video on linear discriminant analysis, so for them, I'm just, you know, sort of um, showing you how this data looks like. So this is the iris data, popular data in the statistics. And we have got, uh, you know, different flower species and their corresponding uh, sepal length, sepal weight, petal length and petal weight. So using this information, length and um, you know, weight of the sepal and petal of the flowers, we need to classify them into different categories. Now, we have seen that how we do that using linear discriminant analysis, which is a linear function, but you know, the relationship need not be linear all the time and it could be non linear. Pretty much like you have linear regression and then you know, quadratic regression or polynomial regression, you also have linear discriminant analysis and then quadratic linear, uh, quadratic discriminant analysis. All right. So the function that we use for quadratic discrimination analysis is QDA, and that's also part of the uh, mass library. So we have, uh, you know, run the mass library here. We'll run it again, and we'll use this particular syntax. The syntax remains same for those who have not seen the previous video. I'll just explain the syntax. Um, so we are storing the data in the uh, variable fit. And the function that we are using is QDEA, which stands for quadratic discriminant analysis. And the target variable is species. So that's what we are trying to you know, cl uh, classify here. And that's our target variable. And we have got uh, you know, many four um, explanatory variables in place. And data that we are using is uh, the training data. Remember one thing that always build the model in training data and test your model or validate it in the test data. Now we've got separate data for training and testing and that's why we're going in for only uh, training data in this case. All right, so let's run this code. The next step is to predict using this model. Now that we have the model, quadratic discriminant analysis model, we'll predict the test data using this model. How do we do that? We use the function predict and we'll use the output fit, which is there in the variable fit, and we'll use the test data in this case. Okay, so that's the code for us. We'll use the predict and let's run this. Now we have been able to predict it. So when you predict it, you will get, uh, you know, a number of things. I uh, will get uh, the linear combinations of coefficients and the respective uh, explanatory variables, so we'll not get into the details. That's the way it is, you know, used to get the decision boundary for you know classification. So all we uh, were interested in here is the uh, predicted value of class. 
Okay, so what class a particular observation has been classified into? Now there are three types, or three classes: Setosa, Virginicular, and Virginica. These are the three types of flowers in our data set, and that's what the model is able to predict in the test data. Now we have the predicted data. We also have the you know actual data. So let's do a confusion matrix and see what is the percentage of data that we are getting correct predictions. So we'll take uh, only the class variables. So we, you know, just for uh, you know sake of convenience, so we just take the class variables from and assign it to prediction underscore class. So this is what we assigned here, and then we'll take the uh, you know confusion matrix. We'll just do a cross tabulation of act uh, the predicted predicts which is there in predict underscore uh, pred underscore class. And then the actual, which is iris uh, underscore test, especially. So let us run this. Okay. So in this case, you can see there are, um, you know, most of the predictions are correct. So the diagonal elements are the correct prediction 23, 29, and 21. These are correct predictions. And the off diagonal elements are, or the numbers are, are wrong predictions or misclassification. So what is the percentage of misclassification? What is the percentage of correct classification? How do we know that? So we'll take mean of cases where the predicted value or the predicted class is equal to the actual class. So this is the syntax that we'll use. We'll take the mean of actual class being equal to the predicted class. So and it comes out to be 97.3%. Okay. So it seems that by using quadratic uh, discriminant analysis, it hasn't actually improved the model because we were getting 97% uh, or close to 97% in linear discriminant analysis. So the model hasn't improved much, although the uh, algorithm has changed. We have changed the algorithm uh, from linear to nonlinear, sort of a nonlinear one, but it hasn't uh, improved it. That means the linear relationship still exists in the data. So that's what it confirms. If your quadratic algorithm doesn't perform better than the linear uh, algorithm, then it clearly shows that the relationship between your target variable and the explanatory variable is linear in nature. But a linear function can actually relate the uh, both variable, uh, you know, both set of variables, a target and the explanatory variables. So that's the way we, you know, sort of. Uh, you know, perform a quadratic discriminant analysis, and uh, that's the way we compare the result with the linear one, and uh, you know, uh, decide which one works the best uh, for a given data. Thank you so much.